The session will be on the DJ element, on turntablism. Um, I was lucky enough to, to have Easy, Ready D, and, and, and Azul do the same thing at UCT Summer School a few months ago this year. Um, you can check that out. I'm, I hope that you've seen episodes uh, of those lectures on CTV if you can get a signal. Otherwise, um, it's on YouTube as well. Three of the lectures are on YouTube. The fourth one, um, I'm waiting because that's the one about. I'm going to upload that maybe this month or next month. I'm not sure. That one will be about POC getting banned and the drama behind making that video. Understand where I'm coming from. I was going to play it for you earlier, but but we don't have uh, visuals yet. DJ Easy um, and DJ Mad Fingers are one of the, should I say, one of the granddaddies of turntablism in South Africa. <laughs> granddaddies. <laughs> <laughs> in hip hop, that's, that's ancient. Ancient. Um, so, respect, respect to our elders. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Um, so, essentially, why do they call it, why do you prefer turntablism as a term, as opposed to just DJ? Um, are the, these mics are on, yeah? So feel free to... Yes. Cool. Right. Good morning. I'm just the guy who carried the turntables for Mad Fingers. So I'm going to answer the question. No, I'm joking. Hi, guys. My name is Easy. Thank you for having us and thank you for staying for this session. Um, yeah, I got into DJing or got interested to this element long after I already, you know, fell in love with the culture, listening to music and being exposed. But in 93, uh, Province of the City was doing a Rapping for Democracy tour and because I had some connections to um, Mr. Fat who's passed on, he was part of a crew that toured with POC. He told me that they were doing the school tours. I said, bring them to my school. And when I saw Lady D on decks, I was like, oh my God, how's this guy doing this, demanding the respect from everybody, manipulating the turntables, and doing exactly what I saw on videos before I knew, okay, this is what I wanted to do. Um, in terms of turntablism, I guess there's a piano there. If someone plays the piano, they say it's a pianist. If someone is playing guitar, they say guitarist. When the DJ uses the turntable as a musical instrument, they call him a turntablist. And uh, DJ for directed peoples, DJ Babu made the term famous, and now people are picking up, you know, from there going on saying I'm a turntablist. But the difference between a DJ who is a disc jockey who just plays records or plays CDs or play with his iPhone or whatever is that he would just play music, and as we a turntablist would actually, you know, interpret different sounds and actually not just play music but recreate um, you know the song or kind of like if you had to book Mad Fingers for a set you could give us the same songs but we would do it differently we would put our own twist to it and now you know 20 or 25 years later with the help of a MacBook when you see the laptop there he's not checking on Facebook he's not watching the Kardashians he's actually just not carrying all his records with him all his music is now in mp3 format because what happens is you get booked for a 16th birthday party you only take Hannah Montana with you but then someone comes and says do you have the Bob Marley record you didn't bring it with you but now with the laptop you can play you know a 50s jam somewhere and someone can ask for the Gypsy Kings you can have it but if they want Judy Boucher you would also have it because it's on your hard drive now um, so in terms of term tableism again like I said um, you know with the likes of DMC and ITF all those world champions if you, if you Google that or just check YouTube, these guys actually get between four and six minutes to come up with routines where they actually, you know, tell stories by, you know, putting on different records, you know, um, and battling, that's what they call it. So, uh, Mad Fingers, you've entered. Uh, not yet? Right. He's not a battle DJ, he's a party cat like me as well. I don't really enter competitions, but if someone has one where they give a car away, I will enter. Um, I will enter. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I guess, I guess, does that answer your question from DJ to Tentivism? Absolutely, no, cool. that, that does. So it's more than just uh, pressing play and then standing back and going, oh, uh, they rock to this. Yeah, the, the DJ's job is to move the crowd, it's to play music firstly, you know, create a vibe. Um, I think it was uh, Maya Angelou that said people will forget what you say, they might forget your name, but they won't forget how you made them feel, and I guess that for me is also instrumental in terms of being a DJ. Um, also, I must apologize, we thought we started at 10, so we were late, and I told him that the first thing for a DJ is to obviously be on time. Um, it doesn't matter how good a DJ you are, if you're not there on time, you can't rock the party. Um, but yeah, firstly, your job is to move the crowd, is to play music, 
Um, and that doesn't mean you're going to play music that you like, unfortunately. Like for me to play the bowls, I play, you know, tap dance music or I play at a barn dance if I have to, you know. But I also choose to buy music that I know I'm going to play in two years' time. So I don't particularly wouldn't buy a Beyonce record because I know I'm not going to play it in a year from now. You know, I'll play, I buy, I buy timeless music because I'm going to play it again. Mad Fingers, he plays clubs, he plays on radio. So he buys maybe music that I wouldn't buy, and then essentially you also buy what they call scratch tools or battle bricks, and that's also for us to use to manipulate or remix songs. <laughs> Anything you want to share with us, maybe, um, by way of demonstration, by any chance? Um, I think let's start maybe the, um, I don't think the I think we'll start with breaking down like, the, 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 the equipment that we use. Mm. Okay, this would be your turntable, right? It's a turntable as well. This is the mixer where the, the, um, the turntables will be plugged into this one. Right, so now we've got this, um, since we in the future really, we've got this little box here that's, that talks to the, com to the, to the laptop. So, it, so basically your MP3s get manipulated as you turn this back and forth. So it will be something like this. single or an album and then there'll be music on you. Now there's no music on you, it's just a control record so it's like ones and zeros that talks to the interface and like I said the mp3 is now get manipulated. So if you watch him, he can play for six hours but he doesn't change the record. Like back in the day when the song is done we'd have to take off the record, put the next record on but he wasn't doing that. All the sounds are on the computer and it gets manipulated here now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And just like they call it a mixer because you're mixing more than one source, whether it's a CDJ, whether it's a turntable, whether it's an iPhone or iPod, and it's a mixer. Similarly, like a mixer you have in the kitchen to mix different stuff. And the fader is just basically used to go from the one to the other one. Right? If it's on channel one, you play music on channel one. Channel two, you play music on channel two. It's in the middle, both is playing. Um, yeah, and all he was doing is basically scratching what we call the R sound on an instrumental. Is that it? No? <laughs> any, any questions? Does anyone want to see a bit of a demonstration of what it looks like to direct the decks? Um, if anybody wants to come up and just feel, feel free to do So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just play the beat for you this side, right? And then... Thank you. 
people didn't say is that for you to actually maneuver that, you have to do hours and hours of this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> That's if you can get that part right, hit your stomach, rub your head, pull oh. your head, your stomach, because you have to do, use your arms at the same time. So, yeah. Are there any other questions? No? Okay. How long did it take you to build up a reputation as a turntable? I, Adam was lying. I don't know. I'm not. A, I don't. I don't consider myself a turntablist because I guess in terms of like, if you, if you were a b-boy and you don't battle, or you don't really go into a site where people would say you're not a b-boy, you know. So I guess for me, I don't want to say I'm a turntablist because then they're going to be like, but you don't need the competitions, you don't do the teams. Um, I just made it my my sort of my. I don't know, like a mission to actually understand how it works. Like I said, in 93 is when I, when I saw the guys at my school and I've already been exposed to the culture as an MC messing around with beats, but I knew this was the one element I would stick to it. So got turntables, sold them, got more turntables, got records, moved on to it. I'm only playing sort of like on Long Street for the last eight or nine years, but I've been DJing for 20 years and that was from your wedding to your fashion show or whatever. But in terms of turntablist, I don't, I'm not known as a turntablist. People don't book me and also, uh, it's kind of like when, you, when you're rocking a party at 12 o'clock, people don't want to see turntablism. They want to just hear, put your hands in the air, you know, whatever. You know, it's kind of that kind of vibe. It's the same with, with conscious music. We love conscious music, but at 1 o'clock, people don't want to hear about, you know, AIDS was made by the government or whatever. They want to know, they want to know how to get a girl's phone number and how the party's at. So for me, it's kind of like, it's not a lost art. It's something that I would do if I needed to, and obviously I teach in schools as well, so I know that there's a certain respect that comes with it, but my profile that I have, I enjoy that based on my work in, in schools oh, or no, radio, so, video, I, yeah. so I'm known to rock parties as a party DJ, not as a turntablist. Yeah. Same for him as well. I'm going to be honest, I actually fell out of love with turntablism because of the club, really, and just um, with, with doing the club and, and radio so much, I actually forgot... A, to, 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 to take care of the love of turntablism. And I'm actually starting to, to get gradually coming back into it now. Because I think when you do clubs and radio, it does steer you away from the, this art. So I can actually say that I was like a turntablist, but I'm, I need to still get back into the pure form of it, really. It's also like the priorities are kind of messed up in terms of, like he said, the club, which is, I went to a club in Worcester. The club owner drives a half a million rand car, this got screens and everything, but he had like equipment from 1999 in his venue. So the DJ is not a priority for him, you know what I mean? For him it's like Spice people are spending money at the bar and someone can play a mix CD, he doesn't care kind of thing. So for me, it's just like, forget these oaks, I will have it at my home and I'll enjoy it, you know, if I watch these DVDs. And also I have scratch sessions with my friends, you know, so if we go to someone's house, there's eight turntables, we just jam together, that's it. So in terms of, like you said, you know, it's like, just something we do okay. as a, as a, not a hobby, but yeah. But as a DJ, that's not my job. But turntablism was not something that I known for. People don't book turntablists, yeah. So, any other questions? But if you have a job now, don't quit your job to be a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me say that, because it doesn't pay. In Cape Town, it doesn't pay. Yeah, it should, should, um, shouldn't be your own yeah. answer. Well, come tomorrow to find out how to actually make money out of this. But not out of DJing. <laughs> Yeah, unless you want to play the garbage they play on radio all the time, then there might be a job for you as a DJ. But. I, uh, right. A friend of mine actually asked me once, we were at my house, he asked me, how do we grow uh, to have more DJs? And he was very specific to say, we black people from Kainicha, we all rapping. So how do we grow other elements? So I never had an answer for him, honestly. I just stood there and I couldn't answer it. I, I mean, I can't, I can't answer it when you say we black people from Kalicha. I consider myself black, but in terms of Kalicha, I do know that if I go to Kalicha, there's more MCs than what there are b-boys or DJs. But some of the best house DJs I know are from Kalicha. They might not be known for hip-hop DJs. I, might, I know two DJs who are, you know, cause are black, you would call them, that's from the township, that are hip-hop DJs, that love it. But they also don't get booked more than what, let's say, the colored DJs get booked. And it's the same like... I don't know a lot of color DJs who play EDM or techno, trance music. That's something white people do kind of thing. I don't do enough drugs to enjoy the music. <laughs> so for me, it's like, I'm considered, I'm considered a hip hop DJ. But as far as the township is concerned, it's not something, this is something we can do. Like, you know, for me, the same people that complain about stuff, when these sessions happen, they don't show up at it. When we have DJ workshops for free, the same guys who say, we don't have it, they don't come, you know. People have been selling records before Facebook. Some people went platinum, so you can't say I don't have Facebook. 
people have been selling and making moves before the internet. There's a library. The library is free. They don't go to the library. So when these sessions get held, people need to show up. So if someone wants to DJ, whether he's in Ocean View or in Fasanta Crowd, he just got to, you know, really want it. So, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but, yeah. So the punchline is seek knowledge. Seize seek agency. Knowledge. I would say there's a, there's a, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have enough females that DJ. And that's also because just like in terms of the MC, you know, people say female MC. They don't say MC. MC. You know, if I say I'm going to the doctor, you assume I'm going to see a man, but a woman can be a doctor as well. So when it comes to DJing, when people say DJ, I know when I was in, in Germany, they call her, um, what do they call it? Lady Jane, or DJ, sorry, like DJ A&E, where it's a female, or they'll say female DJ. But in Cape Town, I mean, years ago we had Kato, I, I don't know, she doesn't play anymore. Ruthie Pearl is kind of on the come up now. I don't even know, C4 is a really good DJ if you guys can check her out when she plays the party, she knows how to, and she still plays violin as well, so. But we do have a lack of females into this element, yeah. There is a kind of a beagle interest, lots of MCs, don't know about graffiti, but yeah, the DJ element definitely lacks female interest. But I would okay, say, uh, I would say, I would say if, if you just get into that point, if you want to be in it, just be around in that circles and you will obviously just latch on and people, they could start recognizing, giving you slots or whatever the case may be. So I would say that would be a start just to be in the circle of where it's happening mm -hmm. to, to start. It's also your fault as an MC. If you keep rapping about these Jose and Royal, girls don't want to DJ because they don't want to play a song that talks about them. So maybe we should make better songs so chicks could want to play music. That's... Okay, um, you know, in most in most cases, you know, especially in the, you know, in places like, you know, um, the one that was mentioned, like Kairi China Music and so on and so on, places where there is large population of people and there's no inspiration, let me just put it like that. In such places, you know, you will find that there is so, there is so much talent, you see. There's so much talent, but there's no inspiration, you see. Like, you know, you will find maybe uh, young boys, you see, who dream to be, you see, to make it big in the music world, you see. But unfortunately, because of not having the, I mean, backbone in a sense that there's no motivation from maybe parents or the elders, you see. Because they, some will even dwell to the, those who fail to make it, you see, before. Like, Maybe someone who was maybe a DJ but ended up using drugs because of seeing that there's no way forward. And so, so how do you inspire or how do you motivate people with such mentality? I was just, just doing it and, and hopefully it will spark some, some, um, some idea for that guy to do it. But, but I, I must also, also say that it is a hell of a struggle like, to, to do this for a living because I think that there isn't a proper ladder for, 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 for things to happen really, for it to be a viable choice to go into this. Um, and I think that's probably where big business comes in, um, should come in, on board where, as I say, look, we're sponsoring you and stuff like that. But I just think it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a struggle. So if, if the guy coming up seeing you struggle, then why must I do that? Because... I'd rather do this because this guy is flossing and stuff. I'd rather do that, do that, you know what I'm saying? So, I would say if it's really to, up to the individual and he really wants to do it, then you will make a, a, a plan to do it, basically. Someone, someone told me, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if you think there's no way forward, then I can't help you. I can preach, I can bring DVDs. If you think there's no way forward, there's no way forward. And then again, it's also like, in, in, in the DJ culture, and I guess in everything else, if, if you phone DJ easy and I say, I want 500 rand to DJ, and you don't phone me back, you phone Mad Fingers and he says he does it for 150, you're going to get a 150 DJ. I'm not saying he's whack, you're going to get 150, but I'm saying he's always going to be the 150 DJ because he's taking 150. Do you know what I mean? And that's kind of also what's happening. <laughs> people, people know if, I, if you got 150, call Mad Fingers. If you have 500 rand, call easy. If you have a thousand rand, call Emil, kind of thing. You know, and then it's kind of like, now me and Emil don't talk because he's taking all the work from the corporates and then Emil doesn't talk to Mad Fingers because people are paying him 150 and it's like, there's also that. And, and I always say, you know, Cape Town doesn't have a hip-hop scene, it's got hip-hop scenes. There's a scene in Ocean View, there's a scene in Hout Bay, there's a scene in North Pine in Mutual Splain. And, you know, 
stuff like this obviously brings us together and even at shows we can't really talk we're busy setting up and we're doing stuff or whatever but I guess that's where it could start you know um, so like you were saying like, I've, I've chosen to surround yourself with people that you know doing the same thing and that's, that's what's going to happen so if you know of cats that want to come up you know you know about this thing bring them here or if you have access to information you know share the information with them like the guys at Yildo the Mule has round tables and cafeter in town at the library or whatever and if you know of those sessions go there and get involved I think uh, we're going to wrap it up for now. Thanks so much to our DJs. So I think the bottom line again, I mean, knowledge of self is a big part of that is seizing agency. Uh, surround yourself with the people with positive energy. People want to share, be prepared to share yourself. But just zooming out from that personal responsibility issue, I think there's a bigger picture here. I think if government were pushed to develop a meaningful national arts development strategy, a strategy which didn't have artists depending so much on the corporate sector for support. The corporate sector has its own agenda. It wants to, it wants to sell beer, it wants to sell all sorts of things which are not necessarily in the public interest. But if the state actually supported the arts in the way that it supports other areas, um, why is it, for example, that the Department of Trade and Industry, DTI, has played a significant role, was attempted to play a significant role, but the Department of Arts and Culture has been quiet. They don't really seem to have a, pr a presence in, in certain areas. I mean, the creative industries cluster, all of that stuff, those initiatives comes out of DTI, not Department of Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. As citizens in a democracy, we should be saying to government, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, what are you doing with our tax money? <laughs> On that note, we should look at the next session. Thanks so much to our DJs. A big hand to DJ. All right, so um, I started out as a, a break dancer in 1982. Yeah, 1982. I am uh, 46 years young, and I, I still break dance <laughs> or oh, b-boy. Okay, so so this is the first this is the first move I learned. I hope I can do it in this space. Uh, at Lexus D. Oh, yeah. And basically, that is the steps that do that form this move the way, right? But the basic steps are this. And it took me a move so long time to learn this. <laughs> All 46, I'm not kidding. Um, but the main thing about this is that I'm showing you this basic because everything is made up of steps. If you don't know the steps, your wave will not look like this. It will look like this. Yeah? And so that for me is what a lot of what I, I do is based on. Like understanding what makes something look a certain way. No, what makes everything a reality. No, what are the steps? Yeah. I'm of a million years. Nobody wants to save up or figure out how to make a million. <laughs> um, so, so that first step is what drew me to hip hop. No? And... Um, we started b-boying from the crew, the crew was called Pop Light Crew. I'm going to try not mention too much of this because the, the, the documentary we're going to play actually has most of that in it. But what I learned from, from uh, um, the early crews is, is that we understood that this culture actually makes you better. So the, bat, the battle isn't against the bra, I got for you, what, what, it's actually dying. Understands it? It's actually realizing that Kiki, I need to go home and practice. And then I'll come back and then we can hoy again. And if I'm still what I'm, I'll go home and practice again. You check? And it's not about, yeah, the flu was the glaya rach me bro. The DJ said, then was it gehaak, to can I get the beat fangi? You know, if you're doing that, and that has become what it is to a lot of people in, in hip hop, people aren't realizing that they're not learning. You know, all they're doing is making excuses for the inability. Huh? So, um, yeah, so we formed this crew called Pop Clad Crew, and there were groups called Jam Rock Crew, there's a group called Ballistic Rock, which was really the Rezano, Hoja, uh, MC, you must know. Yeah, and th those are ones, now nah, there was another crew, I was in that crew, they were, they were our competition, they were, I was in Pop Clad Crew. But out of that crew, there's really D, they're still doing what he loves, right? And, and he's, he stood out way above everybody else involved since back in the day, just because of his understanding and his dedication to his, his skill. 
And he started out as a break dancer. So the thing about, it's funny that when you always came late, I was like, yo, so maybe we can start with a b-boy because that's how hip hop came to South Africa. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't the DJ first, it was first the b-boys. And the funny thing is that the b-boys, most of the b-boys are actually dancing like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> and I was dancing house style, they call freestyle in Cape Town. And a lot of them, you know MC uh, um, uh, uh, Hammer? No, Hammer from BV Kano, MC Hammer, Hammer. <laughs> Hammer and Falco were freestyle dancers. You know, can you imagine that, maybe? Anyway, so that was a lot of freestyle. <laughs> but they were into house music, you see? And this is, I think, sometimes the people who tell the story tell us the care of the story. They don't tell the whole story. They tell the story, it sounds quiet and kicky. You know? And, and if, you, if you were around as long as some of the older owners in hip-hop, then you remember everything. The bass was actually a, a jaw, you know? A hip-hop got an hour. That's it. And most of the men that were there were there for the jaw and the kunas and what, what? Like most clubs are. And a lot of those owners, afterwards, they started becoming involved in hip-hop because the culture is that powerful. So it wasn't, it wasn't that the club was just a hip-hop club, you know? And I think when hip hop changed to like this head bobbing music, and we can ask them moan this was a, we hated that. We were like, shit, play some old school stuff we can dance to. We can listen to this at home, my bro. We don't just stand here and bob our head in the club. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, hip hop used to be all of the stuff. And so people selected pieces of it. And everyone's hardcore, and now nah, you point the finger at that brother isn't hardcore. Kanti, you were also running, man, when the MC Hammer dropped that, that album, Can't Touch This and that, but, do you know what I mean? So for me, it's, it's, I come from that era where hip hop was everything and could be anything. And you were there to be influenced by hip hop and then once you learn to give back to hip hop, you know? Um, they asked me to speak about uh, knowledge yourself. And, you know, after hip hop, uh, B-Boy, started dying. A lot of the Owens, like a lot of Owens went back to do what they ever, whatever they were doing. But the Owens were passionate about the state and they were like a hunchy full of Owens. Like a few men, so Ramon, Dreddy D, Hoja, some of the brasa that I was hanging with. And people went to study and you know I studied to be a school teacher. I taught for three years. I was like, hell no. <laughs> um, but but the thing about it is that all of these Owens, like the, the, there's a guy that used to pop, like, pop. Like he used to pop with, uh, he used to, you know, popping, right? He used to pop with Caramel, or Patrick Icky. His name was Anthony. He's one of the best uh, uh, brain surgeons in this country, right? There's a brother who was with me in, in, uh, in Black Noise, uh, Molly. Molly creates his own design, uh, um, what's this, like, laid back scooters, mo uh, Bicycles. He creates his own frames. And you know, he creates those what's the Lamborghini doors. You know. So and they will all tell you that hip hop made them realize that their potential can be more than just that. You know, that they can do whatever they want. You know, Caramel is one of the, the best um, producers. He's won he's won what's it called? The Sama? Sama Awards now? Yeah. I, I don't know, but what's really Sama <laughs> So, so, what I'm trying to get at is that, like, ultimately, hip hop isn't just what you think it is. And you shouldn't limit yourself to just, you know, this thing that's challenging you, personally. You not, you might not be the best DJ. Like, the two of them were, were saying that, you know, he chooses, he loves what, what it is, but he, he understands what it is you want to do. And that's cool. And people shouldn't be hassling to, like, kick in the broom, and if you, you're not a DJ, if you don't battle. But... <laughs> You know, it's, it's what you want to do. Nobody can force you to do what you don't want to do, you know. And I think that for me was one of the biggest lessons about, about um, the, 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 the various forms of expression, right. And so, 85, whoop, Hanchi full break dancers. Couple of owns, yeah, and 85 was a, was a cuck year politically in this country, right. And uh, I mean, I was, I was in, in, in um, my final year at, at, at school. And Sam Club Gogoi and Gebrotest and, you know, 
in my, in my time, but actually we also break dance at that circles because the speaker was always late, my bro. Remember that? Because they had to smoke him in, man. So you there, the talks gonna happen at 10, at 1 o'clock you're still waiting, my bro. But that's how it was, since, but then the breakers entertained the men, sir. You know? And, and, and Owen started rapping songs by Randy MC. Um, there was a song, Paul Revere by Beastie Boys. You know? That, that, that everybody, and, and, and um, what's the other brother's name? Dougie Fresh. Excuse me, Dougie Fresh. All that, that you know, we remembered from the songs we were rapping. And then Owens started doing shows where there were just one brother. Now I can beatbox because there was other Owens that needed to rap. <laughs> and then when I maybe heard the line, then they needed to beatbox. You check what I mean? So hip hop wasn't just, and nowadays it's like, nah, I'm a beatboxer. I'm a rapper. I'm a break dancer. Do you know what I mean? And that's all people are. They like just, they become this box, which never used to be like the compartment. You know, and so, um, around 86, 87, I, I, I went to study and I reached out to, to the US, to people that I, that I knew. Um, on that side, and, and started writing a frag letters, my bro. And I wrote to this magazine called uh, Word Up magazine. And one day, I, was, you know, you write a letter and you check, nah, I don't know if you write letters, you're sick of this email. <laughs> yeah, little lay bastards. <laughs> no brivers craver, man. Anyway, just for the experience, one day, find your brass address, write a letter, post it to them. Just so you can like experience something, man. It's like Christmas when you go to the post box, my bro. <laughs> you know, and you know how you feel when it like is something in your in your inbox. Yeah. I imagine you open the letter box. <laughs> in a letter, my bro. But in the letter box is also like people would send cassettes, right? And people would send copies of like books to me, right? And I, I there's this book they sent called uh, Blacked Out Through Whitewash. It was heavy, my bro. It was like everything that I didn't know about being black. And I knew all along they'd lying to me at school. I was like, this fucker was lying all along. I was upset that white people would like kill all of these white people. <laughs> they lied. You know, that's what happened. You get upset when you hear that, right? You hear that, how much they were lying to you. So anyway, I got the book. I make copies. I give Rosano one. Rosano make copies for the world. <laughs> Everybody got the faded version of this, <laughs> of this book sensor. But that was the power of actually writing back then, because you could access information, you know. And um, when I, when I, when, when knowledge yourself went around to everybody, um, I realized something very quickly that a lot of us don't want to share, even though it would liberate all of us. We're like, nah, we're not sharing this with anybody. Right? Keep it to yourself, you know. But another thing I also saw was that knowledge was not internalized. It's one thing to have the knowledge, it's another thing to make it part of your life. Don't go right, move on. Okay, is there a beat out of your mind? Break my skin, is there a break out of Okay, let me just let them do a quick demonstration over here so that uh, you can see some of the moves that I always do. Now, in, in, uh, in b-boying, there's a it's like an introduction, and then you hoi on the floor, and then you do like one of the moves, and then you hoi a freeze. You know, like in gymnastics, you put your hand up, and you hoi your run, and you flip, 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 turn, the ambassadors die. No? So, anyway, but ultimately, this is different because you actually you ride the beat. You become part, you go, almost like you're going to trance. No? And that's the intention that your body becomes the instrument played by the music. No? Is there a number for the man? Yep. The top rock is 16, the top is 16. Top your hand, man. That's it.
Okay, it's my... Alright, so that's, that's basic, the basic, like when you get started, that's top rock, six step, a move, and a freeze. No? And so this, this is how you introduce yourself into the circle. And the idea is that you try and create it, like once you learn the basics, you create your own identity. You know, you create something that, like, and usually your name comes from your, your, how you behave. You know, my b-boy name was b-boy Warlock. As in war, lock, as in peace, as in trying to not cause cut. You know? I was always the old saying, Naiman Muni Roli me bro man yara. You know, that was me. So that, okay, war lock. Um, as, as I, as I, as I really, Koho Volan, the demands are now as b-boy malus. No? You can see that, no? Okay, quiet. And usually it's given by the ones who are teaching you or in, who's dancing with you. And this bro over here is, when he started, he was B-Boy Mouse. But, oh, but they still is. And look at now, he likes us on my side. but because he, he, he um, was all at local home, so he changed his name to B-Boy Fiat Mice. I see, yeah, he's my side, he's a Fiat Mice. And I will have a revolution with this man. Is that? Uh, uh, you understand Afrikaans, no? People is, people is, people is field mouse, not house mouse. There's the house nigger, anyway. Alright, so... Yeah, okay. Are you striped? <laughs> so, so the, the idea about, about the culture is actually to learn your basic, which is made up of a, a lot of different moves. And what I'll do is I'll build a break here and pitch your day for day, and I can just be an cup. Um, right, so the the thing that, that, that because because the moves are made up of different steps, like for Asafonica based Nedi, the balance of your part, like this over here is, 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 is where, like you, <laughs> is where, like you start, a lot of the moves start from this. So you got, you're balancing on both, both, both arms, and then you remove one, right? And then from there, you, you, you use the other one to try and move yourself around in a circle. Oh. Yeah? And then, yeah, so that's called the turtle. Um, elsewhere in the world, they call it the float, but for us, we didn't know the name, so we just kick it, like, it's a turtle, and with the turtle, <laughs> this one. The and this other one can say, hop turtle, man. Okay, go, go, hop turtle. This is a hop turtle. Can you see? I hop, hop turtle. What's that? Answer? That's it. All right, and so, can I call it a, 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 a backspin away from your arm? Uh, this is a, 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 the same again on one arm, and you kick around onto your, onto your back. What's that with funny state of Alina? That's yeah. Okay. All right. Yay. Yeah, and a freeze. <laughs> okay, so, so if you can go in it. Uh, so this, this guy with the name of Crazy Legs, uh, Richard Cologne, he was busy practicing and he kicked once and he went all the way around back onto his arm. He was like, oh shit, if I keep doing this, then it's a continuous backspin, right? And that's where this move came from, which now they call the windmill. Original name, continuous backspin. Quite now. Yeah. Anyway, okay. All right. So, for for me again to come back to knowledge yourself is about the internalization of of all of what like this takes a lot of effort, you know. And blackness had a policy that means who joined the crew need to have break danced at some point initially. These days it's very difficult to find Owen. So <laughs> anyway, because we feel that in 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 the culture of hip hop, it's the most physically um, like you, a, like you show your dedication with physical pain. So you, for me, b boys contribute in in bloody shoulders and like actual physical pain. And so we we included the ones who had that history because we believe that that was proof of your dedication to to the culture. Um, but it, having said that, physical pain and your love for b boying doesn't mean that you can expand your mind. Do you know what I mean? And so you can only take a person to a certain point. 
you know, uh, even here at university, they cannot teach so they blew in the face. If a brother want to learn that, you can forget about it, or brother will give you, uh, you can't make people learn something, you know, and the more I'm involved, I'm starting to learn that myself, that Keiki, maybe we should be less mana on the stage, you know, because also you get paid more, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to show you something. Like when we started out, hip hop, hip -hop had no, uh, uh, no written material, right? So we needed to, we, there were people asking us questions. And so I, I, um, I thought the best way to do this, maybe for you in winter, to, to libraries. And every library I went to, the libraries were like, Kiki, what is hip hop? That's yeah. And so we, we decided, Kiki, to write a book called What is Hip Hop? And um, Andre over here, he used to with a copy at home there. It was basic, uh, the basic movements of how to get started as a b-boy, the basic outlines that was organized by Falco of how to, to start doing graffiti. We did an interview with Eddie D about how to get, be a DJ, how to get started. Um, earlier they mentioned, okay, you, maybe you don't have the right equipment. Reddy D used two direct drive turntables that he found somebody was about to throw away. That's how he started. If you're really dedicated to wanting to learn something, you will find a way to make it real. Those ones, if you look at it, are the ones who stick with it and will become good. You know, so by process of elimination, not everybody is meant to be a DJ or b boy. You know, and and so for me, like a lot of a lot of that history and understanding of internalization of knowledge yourself was the necessity to release books and and, and written material. Um, becoming a teacher also started teaching the light to some of the raps. So there was a song I wrote which is called A Day After, which is basically about global warming. This is 1990 or something. Okay. And maybe like last year, I met one of the, the, the kids. <laughs> they were like, hello, sir. I'm like, bro, you got your five lighties here, you're calling me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and the, the, he was like 33 years old and he could remember the rhyme. And I was like, damn, you know, you don't realize the power that the written word actually has. You know, and a lot of MCs think that all they're doing is delivering rhyme. And uh, the, a lot of MCs also don't really, like a DJ, when he comes to a club, he checks out what the club is like, you know. And if I come to audience and the audience is, <laughs> the audience uh, is a bunch of like grandparents, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, you master, and what, what in my rhyme. Do you know what I mean? Wrong audience. And then the same MC is like, Yara, why didn't, why didn't they hire me back? That's safe for sin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's understanding where you are and what you're delivering. What you're passing on to the mentor. But at, at the same time, also realizing that you have power. You've, you've written that word down and now you've... you've You've, you've rehearsed it and internalized the word, right? But you, you haven't, I think, understood the power of actually putting it in a book. Yeah? And so everybody that's here that's an MC has that power to put out a book on their own. And I've done this. You know, initially the book, is there a copy of my book? Okay, can remember this thing is like photocopy the outside and the inside is like... First time? Yes. But the urgency and the need, and this is all cut and paste. You know? And there was a need in hip hop for us to create our own magazine. You know, when, when, when the, the hype, hype magazine put out their magazine and called themselves the first hip hop magazine, Shaheen wrote and was like, Mimro, really? Don't be like Jan van Riebeek and say you discovered the type of You know? So, you, you check what I mean? It's, it's, it's important that you also, like everybody in Cape Town is waiting for someone to do things for them. We don't come from that, that history, you know. 1510, 1st of March, our ancestors kicked ass on the beach in Salt River. 63 of the Portuguese were killed and they chased the rest of them back into the sea. They didn't come back for 100 years because our ancestors stood firm. This is not spoken about by the ANC. Because according to them, our history started when they, uh, <laughs> when they negotiated a settlement. <laughs> um, all right, anyway. So, so this is one of them. At the back over there, Fabian, can you keep up uh, one of the books there? The, um, do you have a copy of Raps as well? 
Okay, so, yeah, there's someone bought a copy. Um, so, so the one over there is basically the rhymes I wrote and it's put together in, in, in a book form. And CD. And CD. For people who can't understand how we speak, buy the book. Get the manual. <laughs> anyway, so for me, knowledge itself is about internalization of, you know, of, of, um, of the content. You know, if, if, you, if you really want to change your situation, you need to get, you need to make, take the steps to make that a reality. We put out our own t-shirts, our own DVDs, our own events. I mean, I can stand here and I can read a list of the stuff that we've done over the years. And I just understand like I'm taking a break. I don't want to do that, but I, I want you to think about your potential. When I go to schools, I ask in walls like this, I ask the kids, name one thing that you see in the wall that an artist contributed to. And they'll look around and normally they check that no smoking sign. And they're like, ah, they all drew that, right? And then one light he will say, the whole wall. And suddenly a light bulb goes on in their heads and like, shit, everything. An artist had his hand in everything. How the chair is designed, the earrings they're wearing, the clothes, the design on the clothes, everything. And then the next question is, tell your mother you want to be an artist. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. We, that's tumpai. So someone's yucking us on the gedachte of don't create. So that they can take your creative ability and make money for themselves. <laughs> you know? um, okay, the last thing I want to say is that I, once I did this at schools, I realized, Kiki, there's two of them have been with me for the last 10 years. They, oh, when they, <laughs> and um, before he wouldn't do that, he would uh, buy scam. <laughs> and I was a state complete with that. When I, when I first met them, I realized something about our young people that they're afraid to go into the circle. And so I used, I created a syllabus where the content of it was changed. Change so that they understand when you go into the circle, it's like the world, you stand out. And if you can't stand out with your head up, and you're going to be like, man, I'm nah, Shit, man, nobody's going to give you a job if you're going to be begging for that shit. Or they're going to give you the job that deserves begging. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And it's the history of, of, of how, we, how we speak and how we perceive. The thing that really pisses me off is when I watch this fucking Vodacom with this, Asya, my bro, Khatib. She's getting married. <laughs> and if all forced the time, I'm like, is that the only colors you know? What the fuck? You know? And I should sound funny, but when I go to when I go to Joburg, away Mebru, away Masakan, I'm like, motherfucker, I don't speak like that. <laughs> and this is and this is because you allow this. You allow that people pigeonhole you and put you into a box that you just club sir gangsters and mean so with no front teeth. You understand? Until you change that perception, it's going to stay the same. Until you write the books in Khantal, nothing's going to change. Until you challenge people at university that hip hop is just not, not a bunch of lighty spinning on their heads, nothing will change. So you need to write your own books and demand that they give you the respect. No? Okay, that was kind of serious now. Yeah. But it's cuck serious, it needs to be serious. serious. Sorry that I'm swearing so much, but. Um, so anyway, for me it's about the creation, right? So the two of them, we, were, we, were, we, we, we created a play recently, you know, because we can. And uh, the play was called, first one was called Mixing It Up. Because I believe in our country, we are caught in this illusion that we separate races and that, you know, we're racing away from race. And we're racing towards race. It's a Musa race. <laughs> anyway, so... The weird part is that when I was part of Afrikaans, you know, we learned that uh, Afrikaans is actually created in Cape Town as a Tisantala, a, a pidgin language that had uh, Tosa words in them. Like when we speak and you agree with me, you say, uh. And uh is Nama. It's a Bushman language. Uh means yes. And her uh means no. Say, Pratala, you leave a Bushman Right now, stop GHD in your ear. I'm gonna kill him. Okay? Let the, let, let the Bushman eat go. Let go. Be a Bushman. Um, so, 
anyway, so um, on a more serious note, we mixing it up forced them to learn different dance styles and learn different cultural music. And like a lot of them circled because they did, when I played other music to b-boys, they're like, that's not b-boy music. They said, that's safe when you send a bit of my brother. Because it's important for us to mix. Because we are mixed. The people who teta is closer, the clicks come from the Bushmen. Yeah? yeah? You understand? You know that, right? Yeah. And words like Aina and Hoha and Kriki and Kwaha in Afrikaans are all Bushmen words. So there's more similarities between us than differences. Yeah. If a brother from, um, his name is Brad Knox, he's, he's teaching Nama on Saturdays at the castle for free at 11 o'clock. No? Make an effort, go learn some, some Bushman town. No? All right, there was an advert quickly. But the main thing about <laughs> but the main thing about this is, I think we need to we need to mix things up. We need to try and understand. Go back to the fact that the race is bullshit. The Zulu and uh, the brother earlier mentioned the Zulu people. Shaka did exactly what Favut did: conquered a group of people, different tribes, put them together, and called them Zulu. For wood said, yellow busmana, sam, and you call you colored. It's the same shit. You know, there's no, there's, the, it's an illusion. And we cling to the cultures and the race thing, and it's easy for them to divide us. Yeah. That, Yana? Yeah. Just say some shit about the other colors and the plaza, and then Mitchell's plane and Kailita's honey brand. And they're running away with the money. <laughs> I'll be fighting over the scraps. Yeah? Anyway, so mix means uh, open up our eyes to that thing. So I'm going to try and give you a bit of a flavor. Um, clap song. Oh, the iron band clap. Okay, let's uh, try not to speed it up now. Hey, da. How was that? I'd like to throw a challenge out to, to all of the MCs. Whatever you say, and, and I, I do this aspirus because we have so much to say. If you attach value to your word, then make the word real. There's a biblical line that goes in the beginning was the word and the word was made man. If you really value your words, you could manifest anything, right? I'm going to give you a quick, just because I think I should. When I started, I was a b-boy, right? And I still believe that I am, because I'm passionate about the, the, the b-boy culture, even though it's in total like, turmoil in, in Cape Town and South Africa. Um, then started emceeing, put out their own CDs, Black News put out 12 CDs, of the 12, we put out 11 on our own. No record deal, just us. I put out my own uh, CDs. I put out five on my own. These are, I'm giving you this so that you can understand that it's not impossible to do this and, and it's, ne it's a necessity. We have some of the best MCs in the country and they're waiting for deals. Yeah. Um, we created events. I showed you this magazine. It looked, looked a bit better than the last one we put out, but it's called The Juice Magazine. Put out a book called What is Hip Hop? 
African Battle Cry happens in December, African Hip Hop in Daba, Shut Up Just Dance, Our Hip Hop Festival, Freestyle Session South Africa, Battle of the Year South Africa, R16, Heal the Wood Project, Cape Flats Uprising, at the back the book is so called Raps consists of people's rhymes, articles and poetry from around the Western Cape. Um, Conscious Rhymes is another book. Afrikaaps to play, Break to play, Mixing it up to play. The two guys over here called Mix Mensa are part of our school. They're in their third year of learning how, to, it's a practical school of learning how to use your skill to survive. Um, yeah, and the cuckers part is that most people know me for step up or step out. <laughs>